This is a tutorial to show you how to write a auto clicker with auto hotkey that has a user interface or a GUI. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blank notepad and I'm going to save it and I'm going to save it as anything I want. Yes, I'm being very literal. So and then at the end, .ahk as the extension rather than the txt. Then I'm going to save it, and now I can begin. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comment saying that the following area is just going to be for my layout of the GUI. So if I have to navigate a script later on, I can find the different areas of it pretty easily. Next, I want to bind a hotkey. So I'm going to press Shift 6, and then X, and then colon, colon, and then this is going to exit the app whenever I want. So all I have to do is just press Control X to exit. Next, I want to display my GUI. So I type GUI, and then Show, and then a width of 200, and a height of 500. Next, I want to make it so that the GUI stays on the top, even if I'm working on this page. So I'll type in always on top. I'll save my changes and see what I have so far. So basically now I have a blank form. And I've already gone ahead and mocked up a basic design of what I want to look like, and this is pretty much about the size that I want. Okay, so moving on. Now, if I look back at my mock-up, I can see that I'm going to have a text field up here, a bunch of text displaying different features, and then edit areas, some radio buttons, and some regular buttons. So I'll go ahead and add some of those in now. So the first thing I'll add is I'll t say GUI comma add and text and then two commas. So I just basically added the text. It hasn't done anything with it yet. Um, next I want I want some edit fields, so I'll go ahead and add some edit fields. GUI, add, and edit, and then comma, comma. Next, I want some radio buttons, so GUI, add, radio, comma, comma. And last but not least, I want to put some buttons in. Comma, comma. Okay, now going back to my text, I know I'm going to need a few of these, so I'm going to copy this and paste it and paste it again. And this is just going to be my title, basically. So I need some X and Y coordinates to fill in this information. So I'm going to start with X10 and Y10 for the very first one. Then in my text field here, I'm just going to make some stars just to make a border, basically. Then I'm going to save and check out what I have. So if you look over here, you can see that it's gone over a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is just remove a couple of these, save it again, exit it, and run it again to see what I have. And there we go. Now I have it the way I want. So the next line is going to be basically the same thing. It's going to be the same X to begin with, but the Y I'm going to drop it down by 15. So this will give me 25 for this Y. And then I'm just going to do star. I'm going to say call this auto clicker and I'm going to put another star and now I need to put some space in between it. So I'm going to equal it out by counting 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I don't know yet how many it's going to need, but but at least now I know that they're going to be even amount of space on the on each side, so it's going to be centered. And it looks like I need to add at least one more to each side. <coughs> oh, dealing with a little bit of a cold. So I'm going to add a space here, a space here, save, and run again. Okay, now it's all lined up. I'm going to take this other line here, copy it. Oh, I just actually need this. S copy that, paste it and then put in my new X and Y value, so X10 again, and my Y is going to be 15 below the previous one, so that's going to give me a Y of 40. Save and run. Okay, so the first part's done. So now what I do is I would just go through all of these and just start adjusting and adding buttons until I get a design that looks similar like this. Now I can go through it all and take the tedious task of updating the X and Y and everything, but I've already gone ahead and made a copy of it. So this is the exact same thing, except all that stuff is done. So I've even added some color to the text, and the way I add color is right in, just before the X and the Y, I put C and the color. And if you don't, there's only a few colors that you can use by word, but if you look up online, you can find them quite easily. So it'll have a six alphanumeric code. So for example, black is zero, 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 right? So on and so forth. Okay, back to this. So I have my basic design done. I have a bunch of buttons, a bunch of radio controls, and some edit fields. So now what I need to do is I need to actually create variables for these different areas so that way I can use them later. So first thing I need is a variable for this and this is X so I might as well call it something that goes along and the way to add that is I type V and then whatever name I want to name the variable. So I'm going to call this uh, X location okay so I have my first variable for X location and then down here oh and I put it in the wrong spot because I put that in the text field which it's supposed to go in the edit field so there and then same thing down here for the Y in the edit field I'm gonna type V and Y location. Okay. Same thing for start for this box right here. I need a variable for it. So I'm just going to call this V start. And down here in the next one, I'm going to call this V stop. So this will be the character, later on this will be the character that you use to activate the auto script for the auto clicker and this one will be the one to stop it. And then you got speed select, but we'll go over that in a second. So I guess right now, so now I need some variables for these. So might as well just call them what they are there. So I'll say V slow, this one we'll call V medium. This one we'll call V fast. And last but not least, we'll call this V fastest. Okay. Next, we need buttons. And buttons work a little bit different. We're going to have to use something called a go to label. So basically, it's the same as putting in the V, except in this time, it's going to be a G. And then the variable name. So in this case, might as well keep it simple, so I'll call it, I don't have too many buttons, so I can just call it button 1. Oh. 
and then for the last one we'll call this button 2 so G for go to and then button 2 okay now that I have that I can put down here button 1 and then a colon and then give it two spaces and I can say return because I'm not going to be adding anything just yet I'm just setting it up and then underneath that a couple lines I can go button 2 colon drop a line or two and hit return okay so basically when I hit when I click on this button it's going to go into here and do a bunch of things, whatever I have written in this code. So this first button, it says Open Spy Tool. So what we're going to have this do is we're going to have it tied to opening up a specific file. So if I go, if I go to where my auto hotkey is stored on my computer, which is in my program files, and I right click on the Spy Tool, go to its properties, then Security, I can get the path. The, and I'm going to copy that path and then I'm going to go back to my program here and I'm just going to say run comma and then that but for some reason if I was just leave it like this as soon as I r start running the program it's going to automatically open up this program even though I haven't hit the button yet so to fix that, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a, a global variable as a way of getting a way around it. So I'm going to say global, and this is, uh, what are we going to call this? Um, who cares? And it equals zero. Who cares equals zero. And then here... I'm going to say who cares plus plus, which means add one to the value of who cares, which was previously zero. So as soon as this program starts running, like I said, it's automatically going to pretend like the button was pushed, even though it wasn't. So it's automatically going to add one to who cares, but we don't want it to run. We don't want this to run when it says one. We want it to run when it runs says two. So we're going to say if who cares equals equals two. No, nope, you know what? We don't need it to equal two. We want it to be greater than or equal to two. So if who cares is equal to 2 or greater than 2 it's gonna run this window okay and that's it that's our first button done so I'll save it and have a look see what it does so here's our oh that's the old program I need the new one okay so here we go and we have our open spy tool. Now when I click this, it should open up the spy tool. And it does. So now, later on, I can find my X and Y locations to fill in this field right here. Okay? So that's button one done. Completely done. Okay, in button two, it's going to get a little bit more complicated because there's a lot more code that's going to go into it. But I think we're just about out of time. So, yeah, so I'm going to stop it here and uh, see you on the next episode.